This is the Hollyland Lark 150 Dual Wireless Lavalier Microphone Kit for consumers and videographers. And this is me editing that audio using the VR headset to apply directionality in a program called Deer VR Spatial Connect. Those are just a couple of the new audio tech tools that we've been playing with lately here at Tested, and we thought we'd give you a behind the scenes look. Hey folks, my name is Joy Famelli. I'm a video producer here at Tested. Today, talking audio? That's right. Uh, we here at Tested have been using the same audio gear for 10 years now. And now if you do any kind of one uh, person crewing, you have probably used similar audio stuff that we have. Uh, the Sennheiser wireless audio packs, the Sony wireless audio packs, uh, some basic shotgun mics. That's kind of, that's been the standard for a very long time. But recently companies have been coming out with, um, with their marketing as like vlogging kits or uh, sort of videographer, easier solutions to get a higher quality streamlined wireless signal to do audio, to give you more options when you're on the road uh, and more ways to record audio and uh, not have to worry about it. Clipping with functions like auto gain or pairing uh, through Bluetooth, etc. So the one piece that we've got recently was the Hollyland Lark 150. Um, now, quick disclaimer, Hollyland actually sent me this unit to participate in uh, this video program that they're doing with other content creators. That video will live uh, on my channel and you can check that out if you want. But I'm gonna be using that video as a way to um, talk about my experience using this kit. Uh, the Spatial Connect, the Deer VR Spatial Connect is a program that we have been using for our tested VR series. So we purchased that so that we can apply spatialized audio. So we can track subjects through a room using the VR controllers then take those audio sources and move them around. So I actually retrofit that to work in with my 169 image. So I shot that video for Hollyland and then I took that and I spatially, or I guess directionally placed the sources to give you more of a, of a sort of surround feeling uh, to make that audio more immersive. Let's talk a little bit about the Hollyland Lark 150. Now this, works very much like if you have any kind of wireless earbuds, uh, a similar form factor. You have this box that connects power through the USB-C and actually internally charges this box so that I can throw the stuff back in here to charge it. Uh, in here, there is a transmitter and there's two transmitters and one receiver. Um, these get charged and paired through this box. So if I have a couple other different um, Hollyland uh, uh, transmitters that I want to pair with this unit. You just toss everything in the box together and this will pair everything here. It takes about an hour and a half, two hours to get your, uh, to get everything fully charged when it's all working in here together. Um, and then when you get those transmitters out, you get about six to seven hours of battery lifetime. Now that's a huge improvement over this setup that I have here, the Sennheiser. Um, again, I've been using this for travel shows and stuff and it has batteries that pull out, but they charge through uh, it was a micro USB, which I guess isn't used too much anymore. Uh, and those have varying battery lives. So my transmitter can last about seven hours, but my receiver there only lasts about an hour at this point. Um, that might've changed because I use it so much, but you really have to have extra batteries to kind of plop in and out of there uh, to make sure you're not find a wall plug. Uh, this is great because again, you have this box that can charge it. Um, but however, you don't have any kind of way to pull the battery out. You should be aware that only if you're on the field of using this professionally, that can be an issue if you don't have extra, an extra solution uh, to supply yourself there. Let's talk a little bit about what is in the box, how this device works, the functionality of it, and a little bit about my thoughts on it, because it's about $280 for this unit. And while that's not expensive in the grand scheme of audio gear, it is still a little bit of an investment if you're gonna be uh, looking for an audio solution, especially if you're doing these one person crews. And so, is this worth it? Is this, there's other audio devices coming out like this. I think Rode Wireless Go is one of the main ones that is very much like this. It has a little bit less things that it comes with. Uh, we're not an audio channel, so we haven't played with it and we can't do a full comparison slash review of both. So uh, I'm just putting that on your radar that this is a tech that is starting to uh, penetrate this audio market. You take these out of the kit and they automatically turn on. And like I said, they pair themselves up. Uh, let's start with the receiver. The receiver here is about three inches wide. Uh, it sits on top of the cold shoe. That's one way you can do it. Now, this clip that it has, has a clip that allows you to either throw it on a bag, if you have your camera bag, you can put it to the side there and just run your cable through, um, or you can just fit this right onto the cold shoe. And so you have your controls. It's very, everything's very straightforward. You have one button, you have your line out, you have your headphone jack, and you have your controls here. These controls do, do your audio, and the first one here allows you to change settings. Now, like I said, there are two transmitters that are linked to this thing, and so that's a relatively new idea for some people. 
you are controlling both, but you have to tell the audio how you want to take it. If you're using, let's say I'm, going, I'm doing a vlog and I'm shooting this straight to the internet, I'm just not doing any editing, I'm just pumping it back out, and I have two people on camera, I want to use the mono setting. That is taking both channel one and channel two, each person's audio, and it's mixing it into one track, one mono track. You cannot separate those out and post. So you need to have those levels between the two people very consistent or else one person will sound much louder, the other person will sound quieter, and there's, it'll be hard to fix that using a lot of compressors and whatnot. Uh, it'll be a pain. If you're gonna do that and you're going to go into post-production and you're gonna actually adjust each, per each person's audio individually, then you wanna jump out to the stereo mode. This basically puts one person in the left ear, one person in the right ear. Now if you push that out to the internet right away, that'll sound very disorienting. You don't want one person in your right, one person in your left talking. It just will sound weird. And so you would need to separate those out into mono tracks into uh, in post production and then apply each person's adjustment. That's how we work. Uh, most of our stuff we um, we capture like that, or we use like one channel for the love, one for the uh, shotgun mic, and that'll be our backup. And then your last setting is a stereo, like a stereo safety mode. Now this is something we used when we did uh, some car stuff with Zoe Bell years back, where we had a love on her in a loud car and she was driving um, so, and she was talking and then she would drive, talk, drive, maybe some at the same time. However, we used a Zoom F8, it's a larger audio gear, and basically what we did was put four channels into the car and then had another four channels capturing much lower volume audio. So basically every channel was duplicated. Her voice would be on channel one, sounding strong, yada yada, but it would blow out immediately once the car started going. Uh, that second audio track, the one that's gonna duplicate, is like negative 20 dB, and so you couldn't hear her barely, it was a whisper, but when that car started, you got nice clean audio of that car. And then what I did in post-production is I just ping pong back and forth. I would use her, you know, use her, use the car when appropriate, um, and swing back and forth there. And so that's kind of your safety track. And that's good maybe on windy days or in your loud environment. If it's just you, that's a really good thing to have. Uh, that's pretty much it. And then the other, the knobs themselves just do volume. Uh, you get some very simple, uh, how, how strong the wireless signal is, how much battery life you have on everything. Um, and you adjust your audio there. Now, the receivers are interesting because I don't know if I was super thrilled about these. I still don't know if I'm super thrilled about these, but it's interesting to use because I've been playing with a, a lot. So, uh, real quick, very simple, about an inch and a half square block. Uh, in their marketing materials, they have a lot of like, this thing being clipped onto the shirt, you know, like such. I don't, uh, this is, seems clunky to me, uh, maybe like the pocket like that. Um, I think you can use this like this. And the reason you can use it like this is because there is a, uh, a microphone there. You think like the Zoom, the handheld Zoom F8 or the Zoom H1, uh, the Zoom, early Zooms where you're walking around, you have this audio source capturing. And this is a little bit of how I did my video when I was out there capturing environmental stuff. I was kind of holding it out places and doing stuff like this. Like I was doing a one wheel. So I put this thing on like my shoe and turn the volume down so I can get like that, uh, that gravel rumble and the wheel going. So it's kind of nice to have this little portable mic that's not connected to anything. Like, like there's no wires I have to deal with. I can place this in places that it, and capture ambient or room audio or d interesting audio sources like and play with it as this. I don't know, again, I ha didn't, it was never comfortable putting it on my shirt. So I don't know why I would do that um, because they also include, which they don't include in the Rode, I guess, the Rode Wireless Go is lavalier mic cables. This whole, portability version, this kind of having these options was more fun than I thought it would be when I use it. I don't know if that's gonna like wear off on me really quick. You know, I tend to like find these new little things and get really fixated on playing with them and then I'm like, I, this is a more pain than it's worth. So I, uh, we'll see long-term how I feel about this. If you I mean, if you just wanna keep your law then plugged at all times, you have a very tiny little wireless pack that you can throw in a pocket. You always have that option to uh, take it out and put this next to, for example, a PA. When we were doing Adam doing conferences, sometimes uh, we couldn't get a clean audio signal into the audio board. And so we would put like a lav mic, coil a lav mic up and put it in your speaker and turn it down and get that audio. This way I can just place this next to something like that, a PA, and have ears on it from a far away and adjust volume that way. So the options are cool. The options are very cool. Uh, in terms of like what the ergonomics for this thing, I think in this, I, I like the cleanness and I like the simplicity. Again, this is me as a working professional uh, in this field. I need a little bit more options for mounting, uh, et cetera. Like when I have this on my, 
uh, on top of my, uh, my camera here, um, and I have two packs sitting here, like it, it, it was a little tricky to figure out where to put the second one sometimes. Like I end up just throwing it in my pocket because A, I didn't have another cold shoe here. Like it'd be great to have a cold shoe so I can just double stack them, right? And put them on there and just use it as like a little mini boom. Um, and just, just to get some ambient and then and then fully focus on this one. And then when I'm ready for this one, I just clean butt off. Like it needs something like that. It also needs maybe like a quarter inch, um, of course, some quarter inch holes, like in case I do put a monitor on the camera. It's like lots of things use that cold shoe. Lots of, lots of camera techs want to use that cold shoe. And usually what you see is when something does take up that cold shoe, like a focus monitor or even the XLR mount that I have on there, they add another cold shoe on top. That's kind of the standard. And so you kind of expect that here. Uh, I'll, end up, I'll end up hot gluing something to this probably if I continue to use, use it like this. Yeah, I'll probably end up doing that. That way I have some options and I can also put a, a, a quarter inch screw and put it underneath the camera. That being said, this is kind of a cool idea and I really am interested in seeing where this stuff goes. Hollyland has been interesting. We used, we uh, reviewed their wireless video monitoring system and they kind of remind me a little bit of the early days of Aperture. Aperture is the lighting company that came out that just shook up everything, made everything super affordable, very high quality lights, like gave you tons of different variations on the very popular stuff. Um, I, I'm feeling like Hollyland is sort of in that realm where they're starting to push for these things that are, these products that are normally very, very expensive, but making them affordable and making them also more user friendly for the people who do run one person crews or vlogging or unconventional ways of shooting production. So from here on out, I'm gonna be using the Hollyland mics to capture my audio here. So you can actually hear what it sounds like. Uh, before it was that Sennheiser microphone, this is going to be the Hollyland, um, and I'm gonna be switching both channels. Right now I have the block that I was talking about, the block mic pack in my inner pocket here, just kind of uh, tucked in inwards with the microphone sticking up. And then I have the lavalier attachment set up to the mic in my pocket. Uh, and I will be switching between those two so you can hear what they sound like um, if you hear a much noticeable difference or so on. So. Here I got my Quest, I believe this is the Quest version one headset set up and let's jump into Reaper. A lot of you may not have used Reaper. Reaper is a free, like a relatively free, I think there is a paid version, but it is a free audio editing program similar to Pro Tools in a lot of ways, but maybe, you know, obviously not as much functionality because it is free, but it does have some great VR tools to work in. And then connected to this is the Deer VR Spatial Connect, which you can see at the bottom left of the screen. So I got Reaper, I got my Reaper audio track on the right and Spatial Connect on the left. And the reason I'm using this is because I edit all of the tested VR segments. Now this is a episode of Adam showing off some of his sculptural hands that you can see on tested VR if you have a Quest headset uh, or any kind of Oculus headset. Um, and the way I do audio in this is spatially. So the idea with audio, uh, and I have to use, I used to have to do this manually in a very broken way, and this has become much more intuitive. But essentially what is happening is we have a lav mic on Adam, we have a shotgun on our rig, a shotgun mic, and then we have an ambio spatial mic. And that mic is already set. It's capturing things spatially, but I really need to manually set the lav and the stereo mic to be on spatial. What I mean by spatial is it needs to follow Adam, the audio, actual audio source, when you're listening with headset, it has to, the audio source has to follow Adam, not only follow Adam, but then um, move with them, or I guess move with your head rather. If I'm looking to the right, uh, I wanna hear Adam from my left ear because he's on the left side and vice versa. So I need to be able to move around and that's what this plugin allows me to do. It allows me to place audio mics in a basically a, a third order ambisonic. I'm not gonna get too much in the weeds about this stuff, but essentially a third order ambisonic output that allows for this kind of stuff. And so spatial audio is a big part of the tested VR series. And again, it used to be clunky, but Deer VR has this application and this is, uh, this is a bit pricey for, I guess, if you're not using it for <laughs> spatial audio. I'll talk about how I use this for panning and directional stuff for 2D 69 video, uh, but it's probably not worth it just for that. This is really built for VR and also like VR games. You can kind of see once I start using this, you can see how it can become a really effective sound design tool for VR games. Let's say like a ship is flying by, you wanna be able to track that source. So let's jump into this. You can, on the right, you can see my Reaper setup. It's a little bit complicated, but let's just say the two mics we're gonna be looking at is the lav and the shotgun mic. And I basically want to track Adam uh, because right now, if I hit play, actually, let me show Deer VR first. Uh, this, this is really neat. This is linked up to my headset. 
I, you, you're seeing a live view of what I'm seeing. Um, I can load video here. I, I loaded uh, this like reference video so that I can get visual, visualization on the, on the video as I'm moving the mic around so I, make sure it's, so I can make sure it's in the right spots. So uh, you can see it's 180 VR. And then I have like a control set on bottom here that I can either use the controllers. Let's bring the controllers up. No. Oh. And uh, use the controllers to navigate this control panel. But really these are for moving these audio sources around. And then you have some tools to like set the distance or like temp solo. So if you just want to hear, I got this in the right hand. If you just want to hear, um, you know, one track, isolate one track. But to do this, uh, essentially you're telling the program to keyframe as I move um, using like a latch, uh, using like a, a, there's like trim, read, latch, uh, touch, a bunch of different things that audio professionals probably know much about that I use only very infrequently. Uh, let's go ahead and add the plugin here so that we get that ability. Um, here you can, here's the actual plugin controls for the stuff. So you, this is where you decide like what kind of spatialized audio it is. Because it's there's a lot of room elements that come with it. When you think about like immersive audio, you don't want it to sound like someone just talking into a lav mic. You want it to sound like, like a room or a cathedral <laughs> or an office, all these different settings. And then you can adjust those dampenings and gains, deal with the reflections. You can actually change like the room size here. So you can tell it like, um, you know, like our room size is pretty large. Let's like move the walls out. And this will change the way the reverb and the audio. So stuff that I'm not as familiar with. Um, one day I'll be there, but as an audio, as a video guy, this is all just kind of like, whoa, uh, to me. <laughs> so it will probably be, um, Counterintuitive to try to explain it to you, but essentially, let's just say this that he is in a uh, just like a medium room. Uh, we'll bring the size of the room down a little bit so it doesn't sound too echoey, and then let's uh, let's let's get let's get moving on this. Let's go latch. We want latch. We want to make sure that the X, Y, and Zs are set up so that the keyframe's right. Now, if you watch this right side of the screen, this will move as I start tracking the audio to him, and that's what we want. We want the base of the keyframes to be riding along as we're watching the video in real time. So we're gonna start with the lav mic here, and I'm gonna set the distance um, first, because this distance is not gonna change, but basically um, you can adjust your distance using this like middle joystick, and this will be how like strong or weak he sounds. If I'm, it really, again, it's about, it's about immersive audio, so you want them to, if they're far away, you want them to sound like they're far away. And when you have a lav mic right underneath their shirt, underneath the chin, they're always gonna sound like they're right next to you. And so this is like, this is both the benefit and the downfall of having a mic source right under them. You get clean audio, but in this case, you don't always want clean audio. If he walks into the other side of the room, you want him to sound like the other side of the room. So that's what this is for. Let's just say he's like two meters away. Um, he's about a meter and a half, but let's just say two. Uh, actually, you know, for the, let's say three for this conversation, because you can see a little bit more of the movement of the audio source. Now I click and hold, I'm holding the lav mic source and I hit play. Now for tested VR, for the most part, the subject's gonna be right in front, but as he moves to the left and right, and walks over here to get a tool, I can follow him, come back here, and I'm, I'll be listening to this with like binaural ears, but basically I'm hearing what it'll sound like uh, to the viewer when I'm doing this real time. And so like, as I move this over here to the left, my audio starts to travel to the left and travel to the right, et cetera. And because the spatial connect is also tied into the VR headset, as I move my head, the audio will now be to the right, audio to the left, etc. Now this is important for me to do this live view because he does some stuff with tools. And again, the microphone source is right under his chin. And so if he hits a hammer right here, boom, 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 I'm gonna hear that here. It's gonna sound like it's coming from his chest, that noise. And so I basically need to do a little bit of, um, uh, not cheating, but a little bit of just uh, improv with it. So as I see him and set something down, a can over a can over here, or throw a, a piece of scrap metal into his garbage bin, I need to kind of jump over there with that lav mic source and attach it. And maybe it sounds too far because it's too far from his mic, and so pull it in. And you can see all those keyframes are starting to write, and so all that stuff will be saved. And so as I stop the recording, let's uh, let's stop it with this this thing here. You can see it. Stop. And now I can just. At this point, I'm not touching any mic sources. I can see those changes I did with the lav. So you can see it moving around. You can see me showing the examples of moving it to the trash, trash bin. Once I'm done with the lav, then I'll go to the shotgun. Um, the shotgun will be a, a similar thing. Sometimes I just tie it to the movement of the lav. 
but um, if I'm using something like, you know, if I was had more audio sources, say over here, over here, over here, then I can really sort of paint together the sound design uh, and using it. But essentially that's it for the spatialized audio. I mean, it's much more complicated, but like this is now how I am putting audio in our tested VR, which is leagues better than what it used to be. Like for season one was brutal. This is um, not only like much more intuitive, but it's actually kind of fun. Like I'm being able to track audio this way. And so you can see where my mind went when I started thinking about doing the video for Hollyland where um, sound was the big focus, right? It was, I think the campaign was focused on like the city sounds. And so having these mics to throw around and then also being able to like take those sources and do, do a passive sound design in Premiere, put all these like noises in there and then go through this in a 2D environment you know, not using ambisonic, not using third order ambisonic, but using instead stereo with pan and being able to like have a car drive by and make that sound like it's kind of circling your head. Um, so there was a lot of fun things to do with this in non VR video, even though I use this 90% for uh, VR video. So there you go, some fun new audio tools that we've been playing with lately. Uh, I am eager to get back out shooting a lot more stuff now that things are starting to open up and using these mics uh, again, a lot more. And for reference, this mic here is the block that is in my pocket. And this mic here is the lavalier that is on my shirt, just so you can hear what those two sound like. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, this is a uh, Deer VR Spatial Connect in the Hollyland Lark 150 wireless audio lavalier kit uh, that we were using. If you want to check out the video that was produced with this Hollyland, uh, there should be a link down below. And I will see you guys next time on some more video production or audio production, maybe? Uh, talk on tested.com. We'll see you next time. Bye.